Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Hi. Mrs. Dempsey show up yet? Not yet. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on well, the other side of the wire... I'm grab a chair. Room. May I have your attention, please? Let me know when she comes in. Huh? Yeah, sure. Thank you. My name is Carter, Sergeant Pete Carter. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. So not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. <clears throat> Keep it moving, boys, all the way to the end of the stage. That's it, all the way. Now turn and face front. Speak right out so the people in the back of the room can hear you. Number one, Francis Gilligan, open charge. Step out, Francis, right to the circle. Where do you live? Later. Last place you slept in town? 219 Valence 7, apartment 10. That on the east side? Yeah. When were you arrested? Night before that. Where? The Golden Gate. At an eating place? Yeah, it's a restaurant downtown. What's your business? Plumber. You'll have to speak louder. I'm a plumber. That's more like it. Anyone with you when you were picked up? I was alone. You have a gun? No. Any weapons at all? No. How about the sap? Yeah, had that, that a weapon. <laughs> what were you going to do with it? Nothing, just carrying it. Where'd you get it? Found it. Where? Lying on the ground in the park. Okay, Francis, slide on down the line. Number two, Russell Pollard, Grand Theft Auto. I didn't steal nothing. It's all a mistake. We all make mistakes, Russell. Tell us your address. Elliott Hotel. It's on Glen Arm or Tremont. I don't know which. How long you lived there? A couple of days. Where'd you come from, Russell? Cheyenne, Wyoming. Anyone arrested with you? Guy named Dale. Ben. Dale Gregg? Yeah. Mrs. Something Dempsey like called. Yeah. She's at the 69th Gray, Street Station. No, what you doing there? On her way What's here, she work, got Russell? picked up for drug and driving. Now. No, no. Working, you won't say anything later, she wants you to get her out. We get her out. Mm. You own an automobile? Oh, I'll see you upstairs. Right. Yeah, Ben. Number three. Hi, Ben. Hi. Anything on the book? Chicago wired about Phillips. Extradition papers ought to be in the mail tomorrow. Mm. I don't mean to change in the night watch. Who have we got? Kennedy and Gomales can stand in for two days. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll take it in here. Right. Lieutenant Guthrie. Lieutenant, this is Bob Tasker. You know, I reported a burglary the 5th of last month. Oh, Monday. yes, Mr. Tasker. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I think I have some information that might help you. You know, it's been over a month you fellas have yes, done. Yes, uh, I know, Mr. Tasker. It's been slow. Uh, would you like to drop in here, or do you want us now, to... No, there's no time for that, Lieutenant. I'm going out on another selling trip tonight. Matter of fact, my train leaves in 45 minutes. Can you meet me at the station, say the cocktail lounge in 15 minutes? Well, certainly, Mr. Tasker. We'll be there. Thanks. <laughs> I guess that's the one he means, Ben. Yeah. It's the only one open. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got to catch the show. Hey. Hey, hello, Lieutenant. Oh. Been out looking for you. Got a table over here. Come on. Oh, thanks. Uh, this is Sergeant Asher, Mr. Tasker. Glad to meet you. Buy a drink? Uh, no, thanks. How about you, Sergeant? Uh, thanks. Sure? Yep. 
the train leaves in a little while, I travel, you know, on the road most of the time. I hope this isn't a lot of trouble for you coming down here. No, no, not at all. I had to drop by the station myself, but I just didn't want to until I thought about it a little more than I already had. I but want to cause you any trouble. We pulled the report on the burglary of your apartment, Mr. Tess. Nothing been recovered yet, I suppose. Well, we're still working on it. Yeah, I'll bet. What does that mean? Things stolen out of my place over a month ago. After I called, it took the police half an hour to get somebody out there. A couple of police will not dry behind the ears yet. Nobody down there cares. No skin off their nose. A man's been robbed, things taken from his place, and then... Uh, yeah, I know the setup. Well, then you know it takes time to work these things out, Mr. Sure, Tasker. sure, I know. Typewriter, camera, I thought a lot of them. They're gone now. Police don't care. Well, the robbery detail has a description of everything stolen from your apartment. It's on the bulletin every day. Yeah. Every second-hand store and pawn shop in town is being covered. Yeah, sure. I know how it works, I told you. Yeah, well, every day we recover stolen property. When we find your things, we'll let you know. Yeah, sure, you will. I get it. The brush off. Now, uh, look, Tasker, do you have anything to say when you asked us to meet you here? Sure, I did. Now, don't get the idea I had a couple of drinks and just called up to talk to somebody. I got something on my mind. It's been on my mind for a month or so now. I've been around. Your train leaves pretty soon, Mr. Yeah, Tasker. Well, maybe we all ought to have a drink together. Thanks, no. Uh, thanks again. Okay. I want you to know there's nothing personal in what I said a second ago. You probably are a pretty good couple of guys. We are a pretty good couple of guys, Mr. Tasker. How about it now? Well, look, that place I live in, there's some darn funny things going on in and around there. You know that? You're talking about 1720 North Raft Avenue? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean, funny things? Funny things, people. I guess I noticed them before my place was burglarized, but I never connected it before. I always pay attention to my own business, you see. I don't even know the name of one person living in that building, and I've been there two years. What do you think of that? Well, how does this tie in with the burglary? These people going in and out at all times, that's how it ties in. They're funny, I tell you. Well, how's that? Well, they're, they dress funny. You know what I mean. Big shoulders on their suits, pants all cut big at the knees and tight around their ankles, long hair. I know people, decent people, right people kind that I've seen around there lately aren't what I'd call the right people. I've seen them in the hallways, the lobby, and cars parked in front of the place, and it doesn't look right to me. I think one of them did it. You think one of them broke into your apartment? Yeah, I do. Well, any particular one? Oh, well, no, I couldn't say about that, but I think one of them is our man. But you don't know which one? Well, any one of them. Well, uh, tell me, do these people live in the building? No, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Then they visit someone who does live there? Yeah, sure, they must. Do you know who they visit? No. Nope. Why do you think one of these people might have something to do with the burglary? Well, uh, funny, I tell you. You ever have a feeling about something? You know what I mean? Well, sure you do. You two been in the police department and all that. You gotta know. Yes, Mr. Tasker. Well, a week ago, I got in from Asheville. See, about eight at night, and three of them were sitting there in the lobby, all slouched down on the couch. A couple of guys and a girl. They all just stared when I walked across to the elevator. Not a word. You see what I mean? Yeah, I see. All of them youngsters, 22, 23... That little place cost me one forty-five a month furnished. People like that draped around the lobby make it look like a dump, huh? Yeah. Sure. Hey, sure you want to have a drink? No, thanks. No. And when I was leaving there tonight, a fella standing in the lobby. Funny-looking guy. When I passed him, he said something to me. I stopped and I asked him what it was, and he just looked at me and says, You uptown, man? Does this man live in the building? No, no. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Sure. What'd he look like? Well, tall, about your height, maybe 150. Had on a dark suit, red hair. How old? 40 or so. Any idea who he might have been seeing there? Oh, yeah, the manager. Oh, what's his name? Uh, it's a woman named Walters, Mrs. Walters. She runs the place. I don't see much of her. Well, how do you know this man had been visiting her? Came out of her apartment. She was arguing with him in the hallway when I got off the elevator. That's when he came up to me. Have you ever seen him around there before? Yeah, a couple of times. Never knew who he visited before. No. Were you alone? Yeah. Was he alone? Just with her. Or did you hear what they were arguing about? No. Mr. Tasker, what was it he said to you again? I, I'd like the exact words. You uptown man? That's what he said. You're positive? Yeah. Positive. Some kind of zoot talk or something, I guess. I wonder what he meant by it. I've been around, but I never heard anything crazy like that before. Have you? Yeah. Huh? He was asking you if you had any marijuana. I'm the manager here. What is it, officers? A couple of hours ago, you were seen talking to a man. Tall, red-headed man. Is that right? A couple of hours ago? Oh, no one's been here all night. I've been alone all evening. We'd like to talk to this man, Mrs. Walters. 
Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Why do you want to talk to him? I want to clear up a few things, that's all. Tall, red-headed man, dark suit. Oh. Oh, yes, there was a man here. I guess you mean him. What's his name? Well, I don't know that. He came here looking for an apartment, that's all. I don't have any vacancies, so he left. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got the impression that you had an argument with him, Mrs. Walters. <laughs> for heaven's sake, where'd you get that idea? A man who lives here in the building said he saw you arguing with the red-headed man. Who told you that? Mr. Taskin. You know Mr. Taskin? Yes, 308. Well, he shouldn't say things like that. It isn't true at all. Why would I be arguing with the man? Mr. Tasker told us he'd seen the man in the building a couple of times before. We thought he might have been a friend of yours. I never saw him until tonight when he came and asked about renting an apartment. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Have you ever seen him around here before? Not that I know of. Well, maybe he visits someone here in the building. He might have. I can't answer that. What's this all about? Why are you so anxious to talk to this man? Just trying to get a little information. Was he here long? No, he just came to the door. I told him I didn't have a vacancy, and then he left. Did he come inside your apartment? No. Mr. Tasker told us he saw this man leaving your apartment. Then you walked out in the hall with him. I don't know why he'd tell you a thing like that. It isn't true. It isn't true at all. You didn't argue with him? No, of course not. What was it to argue about? Is your husband home? I've been divorced for seven years. Well, we sure like to get this straightened out, Mrs. Walters. Mr. Tasker says one thing, you say another. Well, go back to Mr. Tasker. Don't bother me. What's this man done? You're so interested in him. Well, we only want to talk to him. Uh... He didn't happen to leave a card or anything. No. But doesn't he want you to get in touch with him when you have a vacancy? No. Well, here's my card. If he happens to come by again or phone you, do you mind letting me know? All right, but there's not much chance I'll ever see him again. Well, thanks for your help. Sorry to bother you. Good night, Mrs. Wallace. Good night. Nice-looking woman. Yeah. You got a line? Oh. Yeah. Nice. Keep him. I want to look at the mailboxes. Dan. Yeah? She's got two vacancies. Excuse me, Ben. Hold on just a minute. All right. Records and identification, Alexi. Yeah. Booking number? Okay. Half the place is out with a cold, working kind of shorthanded. What's got, Ben? Oh, I like a make and one on this one. Let's see. Uh, Margaret Marion Walters, huh? Yeah. Grab a stool. I'll see if we have everything. Okay. Hey, watch your cigarette. Oh, get on you? None. Oh, I'm getting hungry. I could go for some of Charlie's ham and eggs myself. Me too. Guy can sure grill a piece of ham. <laughs> Ben? Yeah? You and Pete want to come in here for a second? Sure. Take a look at this. Uh, that's her, all right. It'll take a while to get a package on her. Want me to send it up later? Any convictions? 1938, child stealing. Oh, here's another one. May 1947, narcotics violation. Check through for us. No complaints, no activity reported in that neighborhood. Brainerd or one of them will be up later on. I sent through Tasker's description of the redhead and they're checking. Any coffee around this place? No, oh, ran out yesterday. Don't look at me. I bought the last pound. Yes, you did. The apartment building's owned by a man named Shaborn, retired lawyer. He hired Mrs. Walters to manage the place for him a couple of years ago. Asher talked to him this morning. Oh. Shaborn says she's always done a good job, tends her books, keeps the place running like a clock, thinks she's just fine. She gets 75 a month and her rent. 10% bonus for every 12-month lease. Mm. Not bad. Good enough to be driving that for Caddy? Mm, who knows? Shaven gave me a list of all the tenants in the building. Mm. Well, better run it through before we ask any questions. You got a chance to get out there and look at the place? Yeah, nice place. Nice residential neighborhood. Everyone minds their own business. No one bothers anybody else. 
Was that all? You think it'd be a good spot to work from? The best. Anything from Kramer and Murph? Huh? Still staked out across the street. No callers so far today. Okay. Coyne and Asher can follow them. We'll go on at six. If she's up to her old tricks, if she's selling again, we're bound to recognize somebody who comes along. Right. Well, I'll check back. Well, where are you going? Coffee. Want some? Sure. Yeah, wait a minute. I'll go with you. You stay here and drink that pound you bought. Twenty-two, a four fifteen at sixteen fifty-seven Brinsdale Road. See the woman. Seventy-three, a four eighty proceeding north on North Randall Boulevard. Sixty-two yeah. Edward, forty-five sixty-eight. Sixty-two Edward, four five six eight. Hi, Ben. Hi, Asher. She been in all day? Hasn't stirred. Three fifteen, a man and a woman went in to see a stayed ten minutes. Checked the license tag with DMV. People name of Robinson, 1105 North 8th Street. R&I didn't have anything. Looked like apartment hunters. Two hours early, a man from Columbine Laundry Service, another one selling brushes. Both of them working the whole neighborhood. Anything else? Yeah, 20 minutes ago, a tall guy in a brown suit went in to see him. Drove a gray Ford coupe. I looked at the registration. Thomas P. Jepson, 11691 Bell Avenue. He might be what we've been waiting for. I called R&I for a make on him. Dozen arrests, two convictions, petty theft and possession. Want to go out and get him? Yeah. Don't have to, Ben. He's still in there. What time's it, Ben? Five after eight. I'm freezing. Wish you'd start getting warm. Hate these kind of nights. Uh, I'd like to wrap this up. Yeah, maybe we can do it now. There he is. Yeah, come on. Uh, just a minute there. You talking to me? Yeah, hold it just a second. What is it? What do you want? Police. I'd like to talk to you. Well, I haven't done anything. Got a driver's license? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just the license. You keep the wallet. Mm -hmm. Thomas Jepson. That's your name, is it? Yeah. 11691 Bell Avenue. That's still your address? Yeah. Right here. Now, who do you know lives in that apartment building? Hmm? You've been in that building visiting someone for the last 45 minutes. We saw you go in. We've been waiting for you to come out. Who'd you see in there? Oh, but just a friend of mine. No harm in a guy visiting a friend, is there? What's your friend's name? A girl I know. Walters, that's her name. Mrs. Margaret Marion Walters? Yeah. How long have you known her? Oh, a few months. You have any business with her, Tom? I don't get you. When you were in her apartment just now, did you buy anything from her? I don't know what you mean. Did she give you anything then? No. You ever bought anything from her? Hey, you must be on the wrong track. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. She's a friend of mine. I went to see her. I got a right to see my friends. Don't you think so? Yeah, that's right. We're just trying to clear something up. Somebody give you a wrong tip. Nothing to clear up? Well, you have to look into everything, Tom. Did you buy something from her just now? All right, Pete. Hey, stand still. Wait, what is Come it? Come on, Tom, hold still. I don't get this. I don't get this at all. What are you shaking me down for? Nobody's shaking you down. Don't you have to have a reason for something like this? Hey, Ben. Yeah. Now we have a reason, Tom. Did you buy these things from Mrs. Walters? Did she sell them to you? Okay, you better come with us. Full name? Thomas Paul Jepson. When were you born, Tom? August 7, 1911. Blue, pale, medium. Turn your head. Now the other side. Okay. Well, Tom? Well, what? What are you booking me for? I haven't done anything. We were hoping you'd be smart about this. What do you mean, be smart? I don't know what you're talking about. This will make your third trip. Aren't you getting tired of this kind of thing? You're in pretty serious trouble, whether you know it or not. Look, book me, jail me, do what you gotta do. I'll be out tomorrow. We don't think so. Well, you got nothing on me. I think we have. I went to see a friend. I can do that. Why do you want to go through all this? I don't want to go through anything. Not very smart. <sighs> all right, sit down. 
What are you doing for a living these days, Tom? I work. Where? Selling tip sheets at the track. Doing pretty well, are you? Okay. Uh, about my car. You just gonna let my car sit out there on the street all night? They'll tow it into the city garage. It'll be okay. What are you gonna do with me? We're just gonna sit here? Don't you like it, Tom? Now, look, you guys, I know a little something. I've been in a squad room before. Tom. Yeah? It's her we want. Well, go out and get her. Nobody's stopping you. Well, we can have both of you. But it's her we want most. Possession's one thing. Peddling's another. Well, Tom? Okay. She's been peddling. Yeah, Ben. You can bring Mrs. Walters in. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? <coughs> you people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the person. <laughs> The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Clayton Post, Victor Perrin, John McIntyre, Peter Leeds, Virginia Gregg, and Tyler McVeigh. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle.